Uh, hi there, uh, I'd like to welcome you to our seven video mini course on game based learning where we're going to explore how you can use business simulation, game based learning and team dynamics to transform your leadership development programs. So what are we going to cover? Let me give you a heads up on what we're going to cover over the next seven videos. Uh, I'm going to paint a broad introduction in this session. Then in the next session, I'm going to talk about the justification for game-based learning. I'm going to review uh, the best evidence we can find for it. I'm going to review what thought leaders say about it. And I'm hopefully going to show you that based on that, it's really a relatively low risk decision to experiment with GBL in leadership development programs. One of the dangers of anything to do with games is you can get hypnotized by the technology and wrongly ask the question, what can it do as opposed to what do I need? I'm going to reveal three lenses that will help you to avoid the risk of uh, technology hypnotism when you're looking at game-based learning. The L in GBL stands for learning and for learning to happen you really need a process and I'm going to share with you a game-based learning process uh, I've evolved over the last 10 years that seems to work well uh, in team game-based learning. Then at some point you're going to have to evaluate game-based learning technologies so I'll give you some questions to ask most importantly before you go within a million miles of GBL technologies and then some questions to help you classify the technologies as well to see if they're appropriate to your needs. At some point somebody's going to say what's all this going to cost and you'll have to think about a business case and I'm going to share some very practical tips and a little tool that you can use for putting together a business case that you can actually defend and argue about and discuss with senior players in your organization. Um, we've been running game-based learning with teams for the last 10 years. Most weeks we're running a, a, a game-based learning session with somebody, so I'm going to share some really valuable insights we've gained from the participants of these sessions. And finally, my take on game-based learning is it doesn't just happen, it needs to be facilitated, otherwise people will just have great fun and I'm going to share with you some tips for how to be an effective game-based learning facilitator. Uh, but before you start anything, you really need to see where the person's coming from. So I'm going to give you a very quick mini history of me so you can see where my biases and interests are. Uh, I started off a quite technical role as a software engineer and I wrote a book called Case and the Issues for IS Management uh, which was all about computer-aided software engineering and I also managed a lot of software projects and software project teams and guess what those teams never seemed to perform to the level that I thought they could have done uh, so uh, at this stage in my life I really was a technologist and really thinking that technology really solves most of the problems uh, and boy was I wrong about that uh, so I evolved and I uh, took some time away from technology and wrote two books. One called Bioteams, which was suggesting the problem we have is the wrong model for teams. Command and control is great if you're in the army, great if you're flying a plane, but not great in today's modern enterprises. And I found some quite interesting alternative models of teams out of biology. A second problem I discovered is teams don't collaborate widely enough. They're much too narrow in their focus and I wrote another book about this as well. These books were quite well received uh, in, in various places but I soon realized if I was going to have, have these ideas lived on a bit I'd need to create some product as well. I'd always had a passion for a business simulation right from my university days and a mathematical background uh, so I set up a company called Dashboard Simulation to build team-based business simulations and bring together the ideas and teams with my interest in simulation and creating a product. Um, uh, so we've been running simulations more or less constantly now for the last 10 years. One of our privileges is we don't make up these simulations ourselves. We work with subject matter experts, expert consultants and expert 
practitioners and companies and we build a simulation for their company then with their permission we generalize it and take out the company secrets so this spawned uh, i thought i needed to write write some of this down so we uh, developed a book on game-based learning which a lot of this course is based around um, and then we developed uh, books to give the underpinning business theory for various simulations we built high performing teams book a business acumen book a change management book and my latest book on the interplay between collaboration and competition within organizations so that's where i'm coming from technologist realizing technology wasn't everything getting very interested in high performing teams in the collaborative aspect so you will see that in my thinking about uh, simulation and uh, game-based learning and uh, the book's available on Amazon and it's worth having a read, if not only for the introduction by the esteemed Charles Jennings. So let's get started at a very, very high level, the helicopter view of things. So what are the main elements of a business simulation game for leadership development? I have a very simple model. I call it the driver model. Other people call it the Scrabble model. And uh, it has six components. So first of all, um, any, any game will let you make some decisions. So that's the first part, that's the D. The second part is there needs to be results so you see how you did. The third part is there may or may not be some degree of interaction between the players of the game and the teams. V is for visualization. Some games will be very, very strong in visualizing and animating what's happened. Others will be much simpler. Environment is basically the world that the game creates and equally importantly, the changes in this world that the game introduces at the end of each round. And finally, rounds. Uh, games are generally over a number of rounds. They're not continuous play. And at the end of each round, you see how you're doing and the world changes and you move on to the next one. So this is a very, very simple model. It's a functional model. It's a technical model. And I'll, it has some limitations, which I will uh, expose when I talk about the lenses, uh, three lenses for looking at game-based learning. But I wanted to give you just a high-level model at the minute. Um, so... There's a very wide spectrum of game-based learning material available, ranging from the card game or the board game or the role play, right up to the immersive, uh, immersive 3D uh, game. And I'm just going to give you a bit of a fast overview of, of some of the things that are on the pitch. And, and we'll go into these in a, in a bit more detail later, so don't worry if you don't get them all. Um, so this little graph on one axis has technology, on the other axis has complexity. So right down at the, the bottom of the graph, in very low technology, is a card game called Barnga, which is a really interesting game. Basically, the participants play cards, but the rules of the cards uh, are different for the different participants. And it's a great game for exposing cultural differences and things like listening skills. So Barnga, it's publicly available. It's a great little game. Um, and it's used very often for intercultural training, but it can be used for a number of other things as well. So that's very low tech. Um, another game on the different side of the axis is very simple, but Space Team. And I'm gonna give you a demonstration of Space Team later. Space Team is what they call a collaborative shouting game played on mobile phones and you're all collectively piloting a spacecraft which is uh, falling to bits and different people have different problems flashed up on their phones but they have to tell other people who have to fix them so it's great fun great for an icebreaker so we're we're at the technology simple complexity simple end of the spectrum moving on um, again very low tech uh, uh, but a bit more technology, it's uh, a game I built for a company we work with called Crisis at Sea and it's pure PowerPoint. So it's using PowerPoint to reveal scenarios. Very, very effective. You're on a cruise and uh, all sorts of things go wrong and the facilitator just has to fast forward the PowerPoint and, and manage the clock. 
So that's a very effective way to create a very engaging game um, just with PowerPoint. And you see there I'm, I'm under the, the game, for example, I'm looking at how it equates to the model. And the crisis at sea game, for example, is particularly important the decisions you're going to make, but also the environment because things evolve, new crises happen, and uh, you've got to deal with them. Uh, another game that's complexity is quite simple, technology is a wee bit more technology, and it's a game called Playoff that I've used a lot with groups. And in Playoff, what you're playing is four teams who are playing against each other in a Super League. And it's based on game theory, and it's got a lot of theatre in it as well. And it can be dealt with in very large groups, and, and people engage on their mobile phones. But it's all really about strategy competition and collaboration but again technology a uh, bit more advanced but the complexity is quite quite straightforward then coming to the end of our survey going to the other extreme a bit a game called XM which is a very sophisticated business simulation to teach people commercial acumen and crisis management uh, where you're running a real-time entertainment company and this game really takes a whole day to run. There's all sorts of briefing material. So the decisions are very important. The cause and effect is important on how the decisions turn into results. And the environment is changing literally every five or 10 minutes. Uh, so not, not tremendously high technology, but very complex. And then finally, um, on the technology end of things, a game called Spar Wars, where you're running a convenience store um, uh, with your colleagues and in this version uh, you walk through the store to make your decisions and which pits of the store uh, do the products need prioritized and you engage with customers to find out new information this game's built in a game engine called unity so this would be very immersive and this would be re re right at the extreme technology end so the most important point to make here is it's a broad spectrum and it's not about getting the most complex game or the most technological game. It's the simplest game you can get that meets your needs. There's a brilliant world word called requisite. Requisite means just the right amount and no more. So a game that is too simple for your needs is not good. Neither is a game which is too sophisticated for your needs as well. So we'll begin into some of these games later on, but it's right the way from card games, board games, to immersive 3D reality games. So in the next uh, video, I'm going to start exploring the justification for game-based learning.